Now you notice something wrong with the chair. There's an arm on this side and none on this side. I went to move a little bit, put my little pressure on it, and this one broke off. And I have the piece here. There's a little piece that broke off here. And then I can go through and uh, fix this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here. And I have one of those plastic welding irons. And I'm going to put this back on here. Put this piece in here. And then what I'll do is, is I'll take and I'll use like a little um, little super glue or something to hold in place temporarily. And I'll put the iron on here. And then you put a little uh, stainless steel mesh in there and put it in there. And then what I'll do is I'll smooth it over, sand it up, put that on there. And then I'll be able to take each of these pieces off and put those back on. And we get all done. It'll be all nice and uh, fixed up. So that's where we're going to go. So the first step is to get this first piece on here and get it fixed so it's on there. And then I'll take the other pieces off and work on those. So that's my project for now. So we can continue on and learn to fix it yourself. Now we're going to get into the repairing part of it. And we have this little piece right here that broke out. And you can see it fits right back in there. There's not really much of a seam. Uh, so it should fit in there really nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a little dro drop of super glue on there so that it hold it in place uh, until I can get the heat going. I've got the heat warming up and then we'll do that. And then we're going to cut a little bit of uh, um, mesh. Basically it's uh, going to be uh, a screen, a stainless steel screen. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on here. Now the super glue is not going to hold it real well, but it will hold it good enough to get the heat on it. Look accelerator on there and that should hold it for now. Okay, you see you got these two pieces here. I'm going to take these off and do them, but I want to get this one fixed in here first. So I just kind of scuff it up here. I don't know which but iron's quite hot enough yet. Feels like it is. So I'm going to take right where that seam is. And it's not warm, not quite warm enough yet. We'll have to let that, it's getting there. We'll have to let that get a little bit warmer. For that to go in there. And let me see. Um, now we'll pull these off. This one's in the front. This one's in the back. So I'll go ahead and put this on, on here. We'll super glue it on. It looks like it's holding pretty good. The super glue. But I still want to reinforce it with uh, the mesh. It'd be like, like this here. And what I'll do is I'll cut a little strip out, out here to go over that seam. And then over this seam over here. So let me get uh, a screwdriver and take this off. All right. Yeah, we're going to take this. I tried using a screwdriver. It just didn't have big enough. So I'd use this because they're in there really tight. Don't know why they was in that tight, but they're in that tight. And this one goes back here. Let's see how this lines up. Make sure I get it lined up. Yep, that'll work. Fits in there real good. So I just kind of looked where it was. It had broke. Put a little super glue here.
Okay, that's where it needs to be. That accelerator sets the glue really quick. Pretty nice once it got loose. And we'll see how this fits in here. Okay, that looks like that's going to fit good. Now, the super glue doesn't make a real super good bond on the plastics. Uh, so that's why that's why I'm going to use the heat gun to go over it. There we go. And the accelerator makes the the glue set right away. All right, now that said a little bit, here's the screws without set this off to the side. And now I just need to see where the seam is. Cut a little piece off and this seam back here is going to come back down here so I'm going to put something on here and then I'll put another piece across here this is going to come down around here so I can put something across down here and just melt this into it and then that will reinforce it Okay, let that cool a little bit. And in this kit come with some extra material so I can use this for filling in if I need to and smooth it out. <coughs> I'll probably have to take and uh, sand it down a little bit to get kind of the rough edges off. There, that piece is not going to come off. Now then I have this piece over here that I'm going to put in. So that's going to go in here right about like this. Let that cool a little 
bit. There's a little piece of the wire that's sticking out that I'm going to try and get fastened down. Use my scissors here to hold it. Okay. That looks... Okay, for now. Then we can take some of this and melt this on top of it. We can smooth it out. We don't have any sharp edges there. The last thing I do is put my hand on that and run across one of them little wires. That one little piece that's sticking up, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, that little piece right there is sticking up. So let me see if I can just clip that a little bit. Yeah, these scissors aren't going to work very well for that, they don't look like. I need regular wire cutters to hang and say scissors. Okay, let's move that out a little bit. Looks like it's still up a little bit, but side now I got to work on the other side going around. So now I'm going to have to cut me another piece. So let's see if we can. Turn this around and work on this side. And let me move the iron to the other side here. Because this thing is hot. Don't put your fingers on it, it burns. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I picked it up. Was first I did. I end up touching the side of it. It's like, oh man. That just kind of scuffs it up, and I can see the seam a little better. Because on some of them, the seam kind of disappears completely. So now, let's 
see what we have for wire. And all this is is basically a window screen, stainless steel window, window screen. Uh, you don't want to use the plastic stuff because it doesn't reinforce it. But now you have this metal inside of there. And being the stainless steel, it's not going to rust as much on you. So I'm going to do a little trimming at an angle. So I can get that coming here. It's going to form around down here. Okay, now I don't need it quite that wide. And quite that wide. It doesn't have to completely cover it because it's not going to crack and have spots anymore. But I just kind of wanted to make it somewhat close. So now uh, I'm going to put this here and get this started. Try to do this without burning my fingers. Okay. And I'm finding it helps if you kind of let this cool a little bit because it's still still hot then as you try and move it around it just pulls it out I fixed a few other things this way um, with this iron I think the first time I used one of these was on uh, a trailer I was doing where the the trailer lights had broke and Rather than trying to replace all the lights, I just fixed the case that it broke. And you gotta leave it on there long enough, you'll see it start getting soft and kind of bubble a little bit. And that's when you know that it's in there. Now I can go back and fix this one. It I'm going to have to put something over that. It's not digging in quite as far as I'd like it to. I'm trying to not to get it too, too soft and deform it. But I need to get it in far enough that it's underneath. I need to get... That needs to be flat across there so that the handle fits on it. I'm thinking this thing is bending a little bit more on me yes it is <laughs> i might be pushing a little too hard I haven't used this too often, so I'm not, uh, I think I've used it only a couple of times. Could just be because it's getting so hot. I'm going to have to see if I can find a new tip for it. I shouldn't be doing that.
because that's something you gotta remember to do is don't push too hard um, let the heat do the work I think I'm trying to warm it up a little bit and then just force it in instead of letting it melt in It's loose too, so I'm going to have to, when it cools off, take a look at it. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's start putting some additional plastic on there. I'll smooth it out. And what you can do is if you have something that's plastic of a different color, so this all come with black, I can take, say I have a something that's plastic that's no good anymore, you're going to throw away, and uh, you can just save the plastic piece on it and use that for filler on the other ones. Because if this was any color black, I wouldn't be able to, you know, it'd look kind of funny having a, a black filler on it if it was a different color. Make sure I don't get come off and get on the floor. That would not be good. I wouldn't want to try and tear up this floor to repair some of the boards because they don't work too well when you try and take these tongue and groove floors up. All right, now we're going to look at the back piece. That's going to be a little bit harder to get in here because it cracked right inside of here. So I'm probably going to do this in a couple of smaller pieces, little thinner pieces. Now, one other thing I didn't do on that one which caused trouble is, see this here right at the edge? I left that on and that's what I was fighting on that other one. So now, let's see what we can, what's gonna have to come in there. Can you pre-bend it? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna try and do here. Um, pre-bend it and form it. Go and now my fingers will hang on to it. Now, I'm on a bigger piece, you don't have to worry about forming this, but this is such a small piece. There, that'll work. And now, don't put pressure on it, just let the heat do the work. So what it's got to do is it's got to heat the wire up to get into the plastic. All 
All right, there we go. Well, oh, I see a little bit of smoke coming. All right, I'm gonna put a little, this is a little bit different. I'm gonna put a little of this filler on here right to start with. There we go. Yeah, see, on this one, it's dried. There's rough edges. So then if I take the iron, I should be able to smooth those rough edges out. And I'll just take and smooth that, that out. All right, back to this one here. I don't know how well you can see it, but I've got it bent around the corner. And what I was trying to do in the other is I was trying to use the iron to form the the metal or the mesh. And that probably wasn't a good idea. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got some of the mesh up here in this hole. So I'm going to have to trim some of that out. And I may have to come back and put a little filler on there. Because these scissors aren't going to trim it. I'll have to get some of my, my good wire cutters. And they'll be able to trim that off. So I'm going to go ahead and use some filler on here. You have to be kind of patient like you're welding with a regular welder. I always had a tendency to go too fast. And he says, slow down, slow down, slow down. And it's like, I'm going slow. But it's like, no, go slower. <laughs> I can see just a little bit of stuff there. I'll, I'll have to. There we go. This one looks a little better than the first one. You're getting used to it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm a little rusty. I don't do this too often. I think this is only the second or third time I've used this. So, um, yeah, learn, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> That's why I call my YouTube channel, Learn to Fix It Yourself. You know, why pay somebody to do it when you can do it yourself, right? Now, I just got to figure out how I can get in here and do this other <laughs> side. I may have to stand up for this one. Okay. Now, it'd be nicer if this whole thing would come off, but I'm not sure how that, all this comes off, and I didn't want to go that much work to take it apart. <coughs> OK. 
cut another piece. Kind of get the direction it goes. Trim it off. Scissors aren't the best thing to do this with. At least not these scissors anyway. That will work. Yeah, not only is it hard to see on the camera, it's hard to see what I'm doing as well. Now this probably isn't the best <clears throat> iron for doing this, but that's what Harbor Freight had. And I figured, why why spend a whole lot of money for one of these when I'm not going to do it a lot? If I was doing this kind of repair all the time, I would probably get a little bit nicer one. But this one seems to work just fine. Other than me pushing too hard on it. Okay. Kind of touch this up here a little bit. Not that this is going to bother anything because it's going to be up underneath the handle. But I just kind of like it to look nice or as nice as I can. Turn this around here. Well, let's turn it this way. 
feels easier to see what's going on. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of going over some of this. Let's out over this one. Smoothing it out a little bit. And I have a little hole, some holes in here that I ended up getting in there when I was trying to do something else. The iron was against it. So, nice thing about this filler. I can melt the filler into it. Fill in the hole. You can see some of the mesh sticking through. Sticking through here. As far as functioning, it's it's done. I'm just trying to make it look neater. Not that you'll ever see it because the handle covers it up. There we go. That is how you fix it yourself <laughs> and let's set this back down on here so it doesn't turn over again and now I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit before I put the handle back on the armrest but that should fit right over there it's fine, put screws in, fixed. Because putting your hand on this, or your arm on that, where you're sitting in the chair is not, not a whole lot of fun. It's kind of rough on the arm. So. Okay, and that's, that's probably more solid than the other side. So let me go ahead and put these screws back in here. We'll get it all fixed up. Turn the ratchet around. Here's where I need actual rubber screwdriver. Oh, I know why that one was coming out hard. Because the part of the threads are stripped. When they put it in originally, they kind of stripped the threads. Oh. That's why it didn't want to go in good. So this one... I probably won't be able to use this one. I'll have to get a different different one because I don't think it's going to start and go in there. I'll try it. If it doesn't work, I just have to go with a different one. Nope. I, I'll just get a different one. In the meantime... Snug that down, it's on there tight, and I get a new screw for the other one, and we're all set. That's how you fix your broken handle on your chair, so that you don't have to put your arm on the rest stuff. It's either that, either that, or uh, yeah, it's either that or <laughs> yeah. It not, we'll have to edit out the sneeze, won't we? Um, <laughs> nice thing about editing, you can always edit out anything you need. So. Nice thing about fixing it yourself is we don't have to go out and buy a new chair. We just got this chair. It was a used when we got it, of course, but uh, uh, it's in pretty good shape. Real nice chair. It has a lot of adjustments. You can adjust how far this tilts, how far this tilts, uh, how far it's up and down, uh, all kinds of things on it. So it's a pretty nice chair. 
I like to keep a towel and the cats like to come lay on it and I don't like them to come lay on this and leave their, their hair all over it. Let's see what gets in there. Pretty good then. But there we go. Remember, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that uh, you don't miss any videos like this. Um, that's why you, you want to learn to fix it yourself. Save some money and fix it yourself. It's a whole lot cheaper. Lots of times, uh, you know, throughout my, my life, I've been able to buy the tools, learn how to fix it. For less than I can pay somebody else to do it, and you know what? I still have the tool to do it again. So subscribe for more.